what is up guys so in this particular video i'll be uh, implementing a simple uh, vgg pre-trained model to classify images so for this purpose i'll be making use of google collab and here we'll be using tensorflow keras and the image the data set that we'll be using will be of intel image classification this particular uh, data set consists of six classes buildings forest glacier mountain sea and street so the data set is of 363 mb i have moved this data set to my google drive and i have linked the google drive with my collab so i'll be importing the images from there so, and if you want to access this data set i have included the link of this data set here in the first code block itself and if you see this i have already unzip the zip image file and segpred, seg test, and segtrain are the files which I have extracted from the .zip file. Now to make this video small and because I do not want to take uh, a lot of your time because you must be busy. So every <clears throat> I have tried to simplify this in four steps. First one is importing the libraries. Second one, create data loader. Third, define the model and for this train and evaluate the model so for this purpose we will be making use of bgg model uh, you can also use any other pre-trained model like resnet but this in this uh, example i'll be making use of bgg model so step number one import libraries import numpy as np from pil import image import os so these three files in case we need it down the line we will be making use of them so numpy will be to convert the image to array and this from pil import image this will help us read an image from the file so just to read the image we'll be making use of this particular library this is the pillow library then from tensorflow.keras dot uh, layers import dense then from tensorflow dot models import sequential from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator let it prompt yeah then from tensorflow dot applications dot vgg 16 import pre preprocess input preprocess input then applications import vgg model vgg 16 making use of vgg 16. now these things are imported line number seven so okay so by mistake i added double dots over here okay so this is done now let us create data loader so for this we'll be making use of this image data generator so i will type image generator and in this i'll pass preprocessing function as preprocess input mm, that's it now let us create data loaders so train loader equal to image generator flow from directory and here the first one directory directory will be seg train and in that seg train again seg train then after directory let us check the next parameter target size and then after target size, batch size and shuffle. Okay. Target 
target size 224 by 224 because BGG makes use of 224 by 224 images. And then batch size, I'll keep it 50. Then shuffle as true. So this is done for train loader. Similarly, I'll just copy paste it for test loader. So train test. And instead of sec train, it will be sec test. Sec test done. So this is done for train loader and test loader. So going down the line. So if you want to see the mapping of the classes, let me just show it to you. Train loader dot class indices. So this is how the mapping is done. Building zero forest one. So let me just create a dictionary where the uh, key values are interchanged. So the values in this particular dictionary will be the keys. So the reason I'm doing this is when we are going to show model performance at that time, we are going to pass the prediction through this dictionary. So directly instead of prediction, we will get the class name. So IDX to class equal to dictionary well key or key well in dot items and then I'll pass this in the dictionary. And let me just show you how it will appear. Exactly the reverse of this, that is values are converted to keys. So zero is building, one is forest and so on. Then moving on, let us define the model. So I will type model equal to sequential. So I will define sequential. Yeah, we have defined sequential. Then model dot add. Here I will add VGG 16. And in that, since we are going to make use of the pre-trained weights, I will set include top as false. Because for this particular model, the top layer that is fully connected layer consists of 1000 neurons. However, we want our output layer to consist of only six neurons because we have six classes. So I will set in include top as false and then pooling pooling will be average. Then model dot add the final layer that is the fully connected layer. I will type six and then uh, activation as activation as softmax. Now the model is defined. Now I'll have to set the trainable parameters to false or VGG because we are going to make use of the pre-trained weights and biases. So model dot layers and this zero will refer the layer for VGG dot trainable. I'll have to set it to false. Done. So the model is defined. Now let us move on to the training and evaluation phase. So steps, I'll have to define steps for training. That will be the length of our train loader. And then steps for testing, that will be the length of our test loader. Yeah. Uh, this value, let me just comment it out. This value is exactly similar to this value. Uh, number of images number of train images divided by batch size. And round it out. If you want to calculate it out, you can calculate it out. So for example, let me just show it to you. Steps train, I'll show you what the value is steps train. And then number of train images, if you see over here, 14034 is the number of train images divided by 50. 50 is the batch sets. 
and if I round it out, it comes to 281. So there you go. Let me just remove this because this was for our own understanding. Now let me compile the model, model.compile, where we have to define the optimizer and loss. We are going to use Adam optimizer because for Adam optimizer, we do not have to define any learning rate. And it also under the hood takes care of uh, the pro problem of uh, explode, exploding gradient and uh, vanishing gradient. Loss equal to categorical cross entropy. Categorical cross entropy and metrics will be accuracy because we will be calculating the accuracy. Metrics. Just move this pin up. Accuracy, let me remove this because we don't need that anymore. Now the model compilation is done. Then let me fit the model, fit generator here. Generator will be train loader. Then steps per epoch. Steps per report will be this steps train. Then number of epochs will be let us train over five epochs. Then validation data will be our test loader. And validation steps equal to test steps. Sorry, steps test. I wrote the opposite. Steps test. And that's all. And let us now train the model. Before we start training, let me just save the parameters. Let me just save this execution in model history. Model train history. Now I'll execute it. So to save time, I'll fast forward this uh, to the moment when we are on the training of our fifth epoch. So I'll fast forward the training to when once we complete our training phase. Okay, so we are back after completing five epochs of training. So after at the end of five epochs, the training is training accuracy uh, is ninety two percent and. Uh, the validation accuracy is 90%. So I think it is quite good. Now let us check model performance. So this particular code, line of code. So I've created the list of images, prediction images. So let me just verify whether the path is correct or not of the images. Okay, seems to be correct. So let me just remove it. So using the pillow library, I'll be reading the image. I am g equal to image dot open and here for example i'll just uh, for testing purpose i'll just use one image from this first image and i'll display the image display image I'll then convert the image to array np dot using numpy. Then if we check check the shape of this array, it will be in three dimensions. 224 by 224 by 3. But uh, the input to our image is in four dimensions. So we will have to add one more dimension to this particular array. So for that, I'll type image array equal to image array, then np dot new access. Then I will pass this um, new uh, image array to our model and select the model output uh, and 
save the model or output in prop prop as the variable. So model and image array. And once we get the probabilities, I'll select that class which has the highest probability. So pred, I'll save that in prediction pred in p dot argmax and here i'll pass this probability and then i will print it out print spread for our understanding and then again print the let me see the dictionary idx2 class that we created over here this one idx2 class so we will pass the key value and see the class name idx2 class and then print let me execute it. So the model is predicting as four and uh, the class name for label four is C. So it seems to be predicting correct. So let me, for our demonstration purpose, do this for five more images. So random images. So let me import random. So for i in range five so we are doing this for five images num equal to random dot rand int and this will random integer will be from zero to length of this prediction image list so it will be any integer from zero to length of this total number of files in this list and this number i'll pass it over here so it will randomly select that and I'll just put in a demarker so it will be easier for us to differentiate the different images. So let us see. So first image is it is predicting it as glacier. Second, it is predicting it as street, which seems to be correct. First one, I'm not sure whether it is a glacier or sea. Then this third image it is predicting as C, which I don't think it is C. Then this one as glacier, then this one as street. Let us do for five more images to check the accuracy, whether it is predicting correct or not. First one, it seems glacier. Second one, you can see mountain. This one as building, then this one again as mountain, and this one as building. So I think the model is predicting it decently. Uh, the accuracy for validation is 90%. So of course, there's, there is going to be 10% inaccuracy over there. So that's it for this pre-trained model using TensorFlow Keras. So I'll be posting the link to this notebook in the description of this video. If you want to collaborate with me, you can drop mail to shavnak.python at the gmail.com. And thank you for your time. See you around.